working in Python, you'll already be familiar with the idea of lists. Um, they're essentially just like these sets of values that we can add different values to and remove values from. And it's useful for storing like different sets of data, right? Rather than storing individual values, we can store sets of data, very similar to the idea of stacks and queues, right? The main difference is that a list allows you to access from any point in the set of values, as well as remove from any point in the set of values. So rather than always removing from the front or always removing or always like inserting to the rear, um, you would be able to insert anywhere as well as remove values from anywhere. Now, given that Python already has a concept of a list, a question might be, why do we bother learning about how to implement lists? And there's a few different reasons why. The first reason is that in a lot of languages, you may not have built-in lists that are available to you. And if that's the case, you wanna know how to implement a list to be able to get that functionality. Um, the functionality that I show you here, all of the core concepts are gonna apply. The only thing that changes between languages is syntax, which is sort of the beauty of the theoretical concepts of computer science. Once you learn the theory, you understand how to implement it just by changing up the syntax a little bit. The other reason why learning how to implement a linked list is useful is because if you want to do something very specific with your list, say um, stored in sorted order, for instance, um, Python might not always have a built-in way to do that that fits your data properly, right? Sorting algorithms, um, some work better than others for different instances. Um, so you may want to implement a, like a sorted list that has a very specific sorting algorithm used in it, right? So um, those sort of instances may be other instances where you might want to implement a list. So um, keep those in mind. There's probably a few other reasons, but those are the main ones that I can think of for why you would want to be able to do this. So the idea of a linked list, as I talked about before, is similar to a list. Um, we're able to access values from any point in the list, as well as remove values from any point in the list. So again, differing from a stack or a queue, we can actually access and delete from anywhere. And we're still going to just keep track of like the front of the list as well as the size of the list. And using that, we'll be able to do all of those operations. Now, one other thing I will note here is that there are different types of linked lists that you may hear about, like doubly linked lists, for instance. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to implement these lists. So um, depending on the way that you want to implement them is a lot of personal preference and depends on the applications. I'm going to show you the most basic way to implement a linked list, which is a singly linked list that stores the front of the list. So we'll take a look at that specifically. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and create a new Python file. And I'm going to go ahead and call it linked list. And of course, we're going to use our node object. Um, this will be sort of like the last object that I talk about here that um, specifically uses the node. Um, from here on out, we'll talk a bit about trees and those sort of structures. They use a slightly different variation of the node object. So this is sort of like the last one using this um, this node object that we've created so far. And then from here, we'll have to make variations on it for it to fit different data structures that we talk about that are more complex. So you can think of a linked list almost as like accumulation of all of the previous data structures that we talked about. It's sort of like the most generic form of it. So we're going to create our class linked list. And inside of here, we'll have our initialization, right? And as I said before, we're going to keep track of the size of the list and we're gonna keep track of the front value of the list, right? So that's very simple and straightforward. And we'll do the insert operation first, since the insert operation is, um, it's very useful in the sense of, um, you know, we're gonna use the same sort of logic between insert and remove. So um, once you get the insert down, the remove will follow relatively easily from there. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and create a new node that will hold the value that we want to insert. And I'm going to point it to nothing right now and we'll update that pointer um, as we need to. So we create a new node that has just the value stored inside of it. And the first thing I'm going to check is I'm going to say if the index that was provided to me is greater than the size of the list, then I'm going to print that the index provided is out of range. This is of course because we can't access something that's outside of the list. If the size isn't big enough to accommodate the index, then we're out of range, right? So I don't wanna to try to grab that value. I just wanna say it's invalid and just move on from there, right? So otherwise, there's two cases that I want to handle inside of here. If the index is equal to zero, what we're going to do is we're going to take the node in and we're gonna set its next value to be what is at the front of the list. 
And then we're going to update the front to be equal to that new node. So essentially, it's just going to say like the value that we're inserting now points to the front, and now that value is the new front, right? So that's essentially what we're doing with this. The reason why I use this as a special case is because every other one, we're going to have to sort of move through the list to find out where we want to insert and then do some logic to insert into that point. Um, with the front, it's just as easy as updating the front. So um, we don't need to do anything special for this. So it's sort of like a base case. And then we can handle the non-base cases, which is going to be the else statement here. For this one, I'm going to create an index i. I'm going to set it equal to 0. And I'm going to keep track of the current node in our iteration, as well as the previous node in the iteration. And before I go on here, I'm just going to draw a quick picture of exactly what we're trying to do, because I think this will make it a lot more clear towards what exactly is being done. So what you think of it as is you think of it like this. If we have a list that already exists, I'll just draw one out here. We could have something like this, for instance. And maybe we'll say that this value is the front of the list. So if I want to insert something at index one, so this is index zero, this is index one, this is index two. If I want to insert at index one, we have to think of what operations we need to do in order to do that. What needs to happen is this value here, the, the thing that comes before where we want to insert, has to now point to the value that we're inserting. So we'll call this node here in. And then the inserted node has to point at the value that follows it, the value that used to be in the index that we're inserting it at. If we do that properly, then this becomes index one, this becomes index two, this becomes index three. So you can sort of see how that logic flows through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move through the list, keeping track of the thing that I was just at and the thing that comes after it. What happens is once I reach the index that I want to insert at, I know what came before that index. So then I can update the pointer of that index to point to our value. And then I can update our value to point to the thing that used to be in the index where we're inserting. In doing that, we will have successfully inserted the value at that index. So that's the general picture of what we're trying to do with this insert. Um, I just wanted to point that out because it might be a little bit confusing just looking at the code. So looking at this diagram hopefully helps to clarify the idea of exactly what we're doing here. We're just keeping track of the thing that came before the index so that we can update that to point to our value and then we update our value to point to what used to be in the index so that it effectively gets inserted in between them, right? So we're just sort of like inserting in between the two node values. So keeping that idea in mind, the current node is going to keep track of where we currently are. And previous node is keeping track of what we saw beforehand. So um, in the case of like inserting at index one, the current node would be index one. And then the previous node would be index zero, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to iterate while i is less than the index that we're trying to insert at. And what we're going to do is we're going to update the previous node to be equal to the current node. And then the current node will be set equal to the current node dot get next. What this does is essentially it, it stores what we saw previously and then it shuffles it forward to the next value, right? So if we're starting like at, in that example, if we have like this zero, one, and two, the very first time that we come through this, this will be zero and this will be one. Um, and this sort of like, this keeps it as, um, as zero, right? this moves the one forward to two. So the next time this comes through, it sees the value that was previous to it, right? And then from here, we just increment i by one. Once we've reached the index, like I said before, we take the previous value and we update it to point to the value that we were inserting. And then we take the value that we're inserting and we point it towards the value that follows, right? So we're gonna say the value that we're inserting, we're gonna set its next value to the current node right, the one that exists currently at that index. And then we take the previous node and we set its next equal to the node that we're inserting. So this essentially inserts it into the middle, right, just as I was describing before. So that's how the whole operation ends up looking. So the insert operation probably looks a little bit complex. It is a little bit involved. But once you wrap your head around that whole idea of inserting in the middle, this should make a lot of sense.
So I recommend sort of like writing it out yourself and just trying out a few examples just to see that you can understand exactly what the logic is doing. Even putting in a breakpoint and debugging and stepping through this application is going to be very valuable because it will show you everything that you need to know about how this algorithm actually works. So from here, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to increment our size by one. So we increment our size by one and we're done. So that's the insert operation completed. Now we'll go ahead and tackle the remove operation as well. Um, with the remove operation, like I said before, it's very, very similar to the insert operation. And the reason being, so if you think about, let's go back to our diagram here and let's sort of like think a little bit about what's happening with the removal. So let me just clear this up. We'll just like redraw here. We'll have one, uh, we have two, we have three, right? And again, these are at indexes zero, one, and two, respectively. Say I want to remove the value at index one. What I need to do is I need to take the value that came previous to it and update its pointer to point past it, right? So essentially what we do is we just sort of like point past it. So we say that this next no longer points to here, but it points to the value that follows it. What this essentially does is it removes this two from the chain, so you can no longer access this anymore, effectively removing it from the list. So that would be the idea of how we're doing removals inside of this. So in order to get this to work, we have to do a similar sort of idea. We keep track of the previous, and rather than setting the previous equal to the thing that we're inserting, we're instead going to take the previous and set its next equal to the thing that follows the value at the index we're trying to remove. And that in turn will remove the value from the list. So let's take a look at what that exactly looks like in the Python code. So I'll go ahead and say def remove. And I'm going to remove at a specific index that I'll provide to it. And what I'll do is I'll say if the index is greater than self.size, of course, we're going to check the size first. And if it isn't uh, good, then we'll say index out of range, right? And then again, I'm going to do a similar sort of concept. I'm going to say elif the index equals zero. So if we have to remove from the front, then I'll say self.front equals self.front.getNext. Right? So if it's if it's equal to zero, then we're removing from the front. So that's sort of like a special case, right? And then on our else statement, we'll do our iteration like before. We'll say i equals one. Again, current node equals self.front and um, previous node equals self dot front as well. Um, we'll say while well, i is less than um, index, again, we'll do our same sort of updating. So all of this is really the exact same as our insert. There's not really much difference here at all, right? The only really difference that you're going to see is what we do once we get those values. What we do is we say previous node dot set next. So we're going to set the next value of the previous node equal to the current node dot get next, right? So we essentially move the next one further so that we cut out that value that sits in the middle. So that's really the main difference in the remove. And then of course, the other difference is going to be that rather than incrementing the size, we're going to say, um, self.size minus equals one, right? So those will be really the only differences. So now we know how to add and remove values from the list, right? Now there are a few other operations that are important towards lists that we'll talk about a little bit here. And they're mostly gonna be printing out the contents of a list, as well as accessing a list at a specific index, right? Those two are very important. So um, in order to do printing a list, we can override the str method. And what this will do is if you type in str and then put in brackets our object, it will execute this method. So um, just keep in mind when we have those two underscores in front of it, we're essentially overriding a method that exists already. So we're giving it a new piece of functionality for our object specifically. And then if you want to print this in terms of text, you can print it really any sort of way that you like. What I like to do is I like to say, um, I'll create a string, I'll call it strret, which will hold like a blank string for now. And then I say hold there equals self.front. So I store the front in sort of sort of like a placeholder. And then I'll say, well, um, holder is not none. I'm gonna take this string ret and I'm going to concatenate to it. So we'll say plus equals an str of the value of the holder. 
and then we'll go ahead and update the holder to be the next value inside of the uh, inside of the list. And then at the end of that, we'll just go ahead and return the string. So all I'm really doing here is I'm, I'm, I'm creating a new node and I'm setting it equal to self.front just to sort of be like a placeholder. And then I just keep moving to the next value while adding that to the string that's storing like, uh, you know, the full string version of the list. And we just continue to do that until we've moved through the whole list or the holder is none, right? That would tell us that we're at the end of the list. And that essentially will give us a string that has everything inside of the list stored in it, right? So this would be the idea of the string method. So one final one that we'll talk about here is accessing a value at an index. Um, to override that, we use get item, which is this method here. This is essentially when you put like a square brackets and put a specific index in, right? So for instance, um, when you have like a list, right? And you put in like these square brackets to access at a specific index. This is the get item method. What it does is it takes in this index that's provided as item, and then you're supposed to return the value that corresponds to that item. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, so first off, I'm gonna say if item is greater than self.size, right? This is the typical, you know, index out of bounds. So we always check the bounds before we try to get the value. Very important to do that. If it is a valid index, what we do is we set i equal to zero and similar to the string function, I'm gonna say holder equals self.front, right? I'm gonna create a placeholder variable to hold onto the front. And then we'll just say, well, i does not equal the item that was provided. And we're just gonna keep iterating through the list. So holder equals holder dot get next. And then i plus equals one, right? So all we're really doing is we're saying start at the front of the list. And then until we reach the index that we're supposed to be at, keep moving to the next value. By the time we reach the item, holder will be holding onto the value at the index that the user is requesting. So all we really have to do after that is just say return holder.getValue, right? So since that holder is holding the value that was provided, it will just require us to do holder.getValue. And this is how we do get item, which again is just the way of being able to get a value at a specific index. And then just to sort of tie everything together, we'll just implement the length function as well. So this is the len function, of course, we do len and then in brackets the thing and it will um, return to us the length of the object. So I can return self.size to do that. And this would be all of the methods that are typically introduced inside of a list. Um, there may be some other ones that are common, but these are really the core ones that you would be using. Now, if we turn our attention to the main function, we can see how this is typically used. Of course, we can implement like a linked list. These inserts are essentially saying insert um, the, at index zero, the value one, and then insert at index zero, the value two, and then insert at index two, the value three, right? And then I'm printing out a string of the list. So we print out the list and then I'm removing the value at index two, which is three. And then we can print out that again. And then I can access specific index in indices, right? And as you can see here, these are the results that we get. So two was inserted to the front and then one was inserted, um, or sorry, one was inserted to the front and then two was inserted to the front and then three was inserted to the end, as you can see through those inserts, right? Then we print out the list to get that result. And then we remove what's at the second index, which is three, right? We can see that here, zero, one, two, right? So it removed the three, and then we print out the list again, and then print out the specific index values, right? So this should give you a very good understanding of the operations involved with a linked list and the different methods that are common with it. And with this, you'll be able to implement uh, linked lists and be able to use them inside of your applications.